Welcome to PFO and PFO Pro by the Pixel Farm. This is going to be a quick start guide, so I'll try and take you through the interface as quickly as possible. Firstly, we need to load some footage. This interface might look a little bit strange, but what we've got here is our normal folder navigation and in my users, in my movies here's the section I'm using and if I select that it'll give me some details I can even preview the footage and one of my favourites is if we go to thumbnail views it actually gives you a thumbnail here if you prefer details like this, if I go back to the project folder, you can see there's a JPEG here and it won't let me load it. But one of the things I like, if we go back to the thumbnails, is because it's a single JPEG, it's not going to be allowed to load. So it's a very visual way of showing you what can and can't be loaded. And also, once we're back to our image sequence, you can decide whether to use the camera wizard or not. Now the footage is loaded, we're in the camera wizard. We decide how the camera is moving, in this case it's free motion. How is the camera zooming, in the case of this shot? It is a constant focal length, it is not zooming. These camera settings can be overridden using these buttons down here. Our next job is to calculate the lens distortion. We can now find a nice long straight line PFO has now calculated the lens distortion as you can see here. Now we could go straight ahead and track our features, but if we look at this image mat, what we can do here is actually import a garbage mat that will tell PFO what areas need features tracking and what areas don't. Now we've loaded the garbage mat, PF track knows to ignore this area, which was a corresponding white area in the garbage mat, and to only track the black areas that were in the garbage mat, i.e. out here. Let's go ahead and track. This will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to cut here and return once it's finished. And through the magic of editing, we're now tracked. To check how good this track is, if we click here and drag up, we now have a graph which is looking actually pretty good. It's a little bit yellow down this end, very green. And as you may guess, green is good, yellow is okay, and if you see red, red is bad. You'll probably agree that up to this stage, everything's been pretty automated. Now this is our first chance to really get in and start helping the track along. If we select an individual track, we can see areas where it goes red. If I then use the navigation to move through, we can see that that point actually disappears pretty early on in the track, so that could be almost useless to us. Um, maybe it's contributing to the fact that as we move on we're getting yellow tracks. But most things are looking pretty good. So 
So if we want to, we can actually go in and delete points that we think are not actually helping towards the solve. And I'm pressing delete. That one looks quite bad. Select and delete. And if you have a group that you wanted to get rid of, if you click and hold, you get a lasso tool. And then press delete. And that just gets rid of any unwanted or bad tracks. You don't want to go through and delete too many of these, but uh, it can help towards the final solution. But we'll leave it at that for now. And we'll go ahead and estimate the focal length and scene orientation. As we have this nice table, we can actually click and hold and drag our corners to the four corners of the table like so and by holding the shift button down I can move around the alt button I can zoom make sure we've got these points exactly where we want them maybe alt and drag your mouse click and drag to zoom in and out okay and alt and click and drag again shift click and drag and now we'll actually solve for the camera motion again this might take a bit of time so we'll use the magic of editing and we'll be back now we have our scene tracked we can actually look at it in 3D and this is where a couple more keyboard shortcuts come in handy. Shift will allow you to translate. Alt allows us to zoom. And Control allows us to rotate. Back in the 2D view, we can now set up our scene position and orientation. Another keyboard shortcut at this stage is the spacebar. By holding this down, we get an option to rotate the ground plane, scale, reset, move origin to feature, or fit ground to features. What I'm going to do is select this feature here, press the spacebar, move origin to feature, let go, and now our ground plane is set to the tabletop. All that's left to do is export our 3D data, choose which format you want to export it in. Uh, we're going to go for FBX format, click OK. And as we're working on undistorted footage, we can also export the undistorted footage. And again, give it a name and save. At this stage I'd like to take you through some of the differences between PFO and PFO Pro. The first difference being the fact that PFO Pro can handle image sequences as well as QuickTime and AVI files and it's also available on the Linux platform. Another benefit of PFO Pro is you can manually set the solver keyframe. You can also add in user features and use these user features to resolve. And the Pro exports allow a much wider range of applications to be exported to. Next time I'll take you through adding user features in PFO Pro.